Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part one of the section of the book titled Orthogonal Complements and Minimization Problems. In this video, we will focus on orthogonal complements. Let's recall our standard notation. F denotes either the scalar field R of real numbers or the scalar field C of complex numbers. V denotes an inner product space over F. If U is a subset of our inner product space V, then the orthogonal complement of U is a set of all vectors in V that are orthogonal to every vector in U. Let's look at two examples, both in R3. First, if U is a line in R3 containing the origin, then the orthogonal complement of U is the plane containing the origin that is perpendicular to the line u. For our second example, if u is a plane in R3 containing the origin, then the orthogonal complement of u is the line containing the origin that is perpendicular to the plane u. Let's look at some simple properties of orthogonal complements. If u is a subset of v, then the orthogonal complement of u is a subspace of v. This is easy to verify from the definitions. Be sure that you do it. The orthogonal complement of the set consisting just of zero is the whole vector space V. Again, this follows directly from the definitions because any vector inner product with U is equal to zero. The orthogonal complement of the entire vector space V is equal to the set consisting just of the additive identity zero. This property is a special case of the next property, which says that if u is a subset of v, then u intersect the orthogonal complement of u is contained in the set containing only zero. Notice that we are not requiring u to be a subspace of v, so u might not contain zero, which is why we have contained here rather than equals. The reason that u intersect the orthogonal complement of u is at most zero is that no vector can be orthogonal to itself except for the zero vector. Taking u to equal the entire subspace v, we get the previous bullet point. Finally, if u and w are subsets of v and u is a subset of w, then the orthogonal complement of w is contained in the orthogonal complement of u. In other words, the inclusions get reversed. Again, this is easy to verify from the definitions. You should pause the video for a moment, verify these, or check the verifications in the book. Our next result states that if u is a finite dimensional subspace of v, then v is equal to u direct sum the orthogonal complement of u. Let's give a sketch of the proof of this important result. Let's ignore the direct sum for a moment. Our first goal is to prove that the entire vector space V is equal to U plus the orthogonal complement of U. To prove this, suppose V is an arbitrary vector in V. Let E1 up to EM be an orthonormal basis of our subspace U, and let the vector U be defined as shown here. Then V minus U in a product with one of the EJs is equal by additivity to v inner product ej minus u inner product ej. And if you look at the formula above for u, you'll see that u inner product ej is equal to v inner product ej, so we get zero. This is true for each j from 1 up to m, and e1 up to em span u. Because v minus u is orthogonal to each of the ej's, v minus u is orthogonal to everything in the span of the ej's, in other words, the vector v minus u is in the orthogonal complement of the subspace u. Now we can write v equal to u plus v minus u, which shows that v is in the sum u plus the orthogonal complement of u. In other words, the entire vector space v is equal to u plus the orthogonal complement of u. We also know from one of our previous properties that u intersect the orthogonal complement of u is equal to zero. That's the condition that says that the sum is a direct sum, completing the proof. Our next result tells us that if v is finite dimensional, 
and u is a subspace of v, then the dimension of the orthogonal complement of u is equal to the dimension of v minus the dimension of u. This result follows immediately from the result to the left about the direct sum decomposition of v as u direct sum, the orthogonal complement of u. Our final result on this slide says that if u is a finite dimensional subspace of v, then the orthogonal complement of the orthogonal complement of u is equal to u. In other words, take orthogonal complements twice for any subspace, and you get back to where you started, as long as we start with the finite dimensional subspace. You can see the proof of this result in the book. Suppose u is a finite dimensional subspace of v. We're now going to define an operator called the orthogonal projection of v onto u. This operator is denoted by p sub u. It is defined as follows. We fix a vector v in v, and by our previous result, we can write v as something in u plus something in the orthogonal complement of u. We define p sub u of v to be the thing that's in u in this decomposition. We actually even have a formula. If we have an orthonormal basis, e1 up to em of u, then p sub u of v is given by the formula shown here. This formula follows from the proof given on the previous slide that v is equal to u direct sum, the orthogonal complement of u. Note that p sub u of v is uniquely determined by the subspace u and the vector v. But this formula seems to involve an orthonormal basis, which is not unique. However, if a different orthonormal basis is chosen, then the sum shown here will turn out to be the same thing. We now list some fairly simple properties of orthogonal projections. Suppose u is a finite dimensional subspace of v. Our first property states that the orthogonal projection p sub u is indeed an operator on v. In other words, it is a linear map from v to v. Our second property states that p sub u applied to a vector in the subspace u gives us back the vector we started with for every vector in the subspace u. The third property says that if we apply our orthogonal projection p sub u to a vector in the orthogonal complement of u, then we get the zero vector. Our fourth property is that the range of the orthogonal projection p sub u is the subspace u. The next property states that the null space of the orthogonal projection p sub u is equal to the orthogonal complement of u. The next property states that if we take any vector in v, then v minus p sub u applied to that vector is in the orthogonal complement of u. Our next property states that if we apply p sub u twice, we get back to p sub u. In other words, p sub u squared is equal to p sub u. And our last property is that the norm of p sub u applied to any vector is less than or equal to the norm of that vector. All of these properties are fairly simple. You should pause the video, try to prove as many as you can, and when you get stuck, please look at the book. This concludes part one of the video on orthogonal complements and minimization problems.